there are plenty of reasons and scenarios for people to discover outside their communities. And today, I'm gonna to tell you about mine. Back home in the Middle East, it's totally normal for children to stay at their parents' place, even if they are 30 and older. However, for myself, at 18, I left my parents' place. I wanted to discover the world and navigate it solely. I found myself spending my time between university and hanging out with my friends. Everything seemed normal. However, it was tasteless. Until 2011, when the Syrian revolution started. I remember I was watching the TV with my parents, watching people protesting as one, united to deliver a message and to reach for a better future. We were watching in silent, but in my head, the thoughts were louder than ever. I was amazed of how those people were standing up as a collective, looking for a better future for everyone, regardless of their individuals, backgrounds and stories, and those who join or not. I got really excited to know more about them, their ideas, and the most important question was, why I didn't know that these people exist. This event opened my eyes into the reality of our communities that sometimes we are living in a box. And in that box, we are all entitled to the same amount of information and the same rules and values. So I began to reach out to those who were affected by the events of the revolution. This was the first step for me to change my personality to be more open-minded and to build the ability to look at things from a broader perspective. At 21, I lost friends and family members for the uprise. And I might be next, so I had to leave. I was forced to leave and I thought it's gonna be only one month and I'm gonna go back. But here I am after almost 10 years. I traveled and lived in five countries. Each one of them had a great welcoming community. I, had great, I met great people. I had great experiences. Here's myself selling pajamas on the streets of Egypt, team building activities with some people I worked with and making great and best friends. That doesn't ignore the fact that I faced racism and discrimination. But however, I made a decision to stick with the people who welcomed me, who saw me as an inspiration. They were eager to know more about me because I was different. I was the one different. And being different always pushed me to prove myself and to show that I am as efficient and as strong as anyone else in the community. In 2016, I moved to the UK to do my master's at 25. And there was nothing as valuable as being surrounded by international students from all around the world. The group that I was with, they were from Greece, Canada, Netherlands, Ukraine, Jordan, UK. We get all those different perspectives based on everyone, community and culture, and nothing beat that holistic view when you are discussing a topic. After graduation, my friends leave back to their countries, and I found myself stuck with no country to go to. And yet, I had to make another life-changing decision. And my only option was to go through the asylum-seeking process. I went down to Croydon Centre in London. And as I walked in, the centre was full of people from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different colour and age. After I finished my interview with the case officer, you hand in all your identifications and you leave with a piece of paper. I remember standing out of the centre, holding that piece of paper in front of me. My mind went blank as if it didn't want to have that conversation with me about it. I remember going back home, 
I had my, my head in, onto the window of the train and I started crying. It was the first time I'm crying in public. I felt hopeless. After that, my time was feeling depressed, hopeless, alone. You can't work. You can't do anything but just wait. Checking your post mail, looking for that confirmation letter coming in. Luckily enough, after six months, I got my documents. I'm saying luckily enough because there, there are people who would wait for a year or more and then get rejected. Now here I am looking for my future career and professional path in the new place that I chose to be mine. I knew that I needed to integrate in this new environment. So I started attending every single event around enterprising and entrepreneurship, which I love. At the beginning, I didn't know what I'm gonna be doing, but what I was sure of that I need to be there to learn more about the tools and means in this new environment to build a better future for myself. Without ignoring the other things that I've learned from the previous communities, because they helped me to be capable to explore the new ones. I started as well doing training sessions and incubators and accelerators at the universities until I met my current partners in two separate training and networking events. I remember one of them, we only had a chat for three minutes at the door before leaving one of the events. We are a team of four from four different cities and three different countries. However, we work towards the same goal and we are confident with the tools, resources that we have in our pockets. I'm using the immigrants as an example because an immigrant represents anyone who is moving from an environment to another. And this integration that we do yield the huge benefits, not only on ourselves, but on the whole country. The World Bank estimates that in an increase of 3% in the immigrant's workforce would generate over $350 billion, and that's just in the developed country. The $1 trillion brand, Apple, was founded by a child of a Syrian immigrant, and I'm looking forward for my kid to do the same. In the UK, almost half of the fastest growing startups are founded or co-founded by immigrants. Deliveroo, founded by two immigrants, valued now at seven billion pounds. The common thing between those entrepreneurs that they all engage with the community they are in and they utilize the resources available. At one of the reports of Aston University, it shows that immigrants are twice more likely to be entrepreneurs. And it makes sense because an immigrant would work without a safety net and them being different makes it easier for them to think differently as well. Here in Birmingham, we are more ethnically diverse than London. And as I work with the startups and entrepreneurs on a daily basis, I can't help but notice that those who are the most committed to their businesses and their ideas are those who are minorities and less represented. They put in all the effort to change their lives and the lives of people around them. Recently, and during the lockdown, like everyone else, I was reflecting on what am I doing and how I can go further. And then I found myself stuck not able to make, take those steps to integrate more. And I talked with a therapist and she made me realize that I was afraid of losing my identity. And this is what led me to talk about this today. Because I know that there is a lot of people out there who are like me, described as minorities in their, in their communities. And they're gonna go through this at some point of their lives. I wanna assure you the strength of your identity is illustrated when you are able to express it and be proud of it in the new communities that you are in, not in your born-in community. So take that step and move forward. You're gonna learn more about yourself and at the end, you belong to yourself.
I understand that when we are in a new environment, we are vulnerable. But as Dr. Brene Brown says, vulnerability is the birthplace of innovation, creativity, and change.